You know, a bunch of pals got together for a joyous pre-Christmas celebration on a steamy Queensland summer night. They connected at the hidden Turner Butter Farm and had a great time laughing and grilling excellent meals together. But as they headed farther into the Daintree Forest, neither of them could have anticipated the dark and tragic turn this night would take. Unknown danger lurks in the shadows, waiting for the ideal opportunity to strike. This terrible true account of their fatal run-in with one of the most fearsome carnivores on our planet. Welcome to Wild Assault. The blazing Queensland heat enveloped the small group of friends as they gathered at the quiet Turner Butterfly Farm, just outside of town on the evening of December 21's 1985, only days before Christmas. The gang was planning an early Christmas BBQ, with the aroma of grilled food wafting through the air and the crackle of boiling oil filling their ears. Around 11.30 p.m., the pals raise a glass to another holiday season spent together. Four of the group's daring members decided to escape the festivities and explore the adjacent rainforest. Their trek would take them through the deep vegetation of the Daintree jungle to a wood and boardwalk. They'd go deeper into the bush from here until they located a private dock on the banks of Bear Creek. This creek is a branch of the famous Daintree River, which is one of the area's longest rivers and is recognized for its gorgeous rainforests, surroundings, unique fauna, and rich environment. The creek flows through the lush tropical rainforest, creating a scenic and tranquil scene. The land surrounding the creek is lush and alive with diverse vegetation and species. This contains a diverse range of bird species, amphibians, reptiles, and mammals, the most renowned of which are saltwater crocodiles, tree kangaroos, and the elusive cassowary, not to mention some of the world's most venomous species. The region is also home to other people. This contains eastern brown serpents, coastal taipans, and death eaters. The group then sat on the wharf, letting the nocturnal symphony of the North Australian forest to serenade them. Their faces were lit solely by the warm glow of a single lamppost above them as they laughed and told stories to one another. To escape the heat of the night, one of the pals suggested they jump into the creek. They were all aware of the potential perils lurking beneath the surface, such as bull sharks migrating from the surrounding coral sea and the aforementioned dangerous saltwater crocodiles that make the region home. Despite their fears, the friends would be lulled into a false feeling of security by the quiet and shallow waters of Bear Creek. The first to enter the water, Maurice Methling, felt a familiar discomfort and rushed back onto the dock. His warnings to the others, however, went unheeded. Seeing how quiet the sea was, they were certain that they could notice any danger. The remainder of the gang would enter the water. John Robb and Beryl Rock, both 43, were the next to take the jump staying close to the dock while waiting in the creek. Morris and Selena, on the other hand, chose the protection of the jetty. They had no idea, however, that they were being discreetly observed by a five-meter-long saltwater crocodile hiding just beneath the creek's ink surface. The rainforest course would abruptly fade to a hushed stillness as the croc got closer to the unknowing friends. At this point, John would experience the same unease that Maurice had stated previously. He, too, would attempt to climb back onto the dock, overcome with tension. However, just as John was about to totally extricate himself from the water, a huge explosion like force encircled him. I was caught off guard. The water turbulence pulled him back, in the midst of the commotion and chaos. John would be perplexed by what had just occurred. His dockmates, on the other hand, had witnessed everything. They had discovered the massive body and tail of a crocodile, which they estimated to be 17 to 18 feet long. They then noticed Beryl Rock, whose face was distorted in despair as she raised her arms in a vain attempt to scream for aid. Before disappearing beneath the surface of the ocean, never to be seen again, according to investigative sources, Beryl Rock was most likely kidnapped by Big Jim, a legendary crocodile, because of the attack's speed and ambiguity. There was much speculation and finger pointing. Instead of being viewed as a tragic accident, the death of Rock would be sensationalized, a mysterious, strange, and out-of-the-ordinary experience. A few days before Rock's killing, a man was discovered on a nearby road called Upper Daintree, executed mafia-style with heroin in his pocket. The media was rife with speculations that Rock had witnessed the execution and was thus murdered to prevent her from testifying. According to other legends, Rock was cut up into bits with a chainsaw and then fed to the crocodiles. These outlandish stories were so popular 
that some two months after Rock's murder, Queensland's then Attorney General, Neville Harper, had to address them in Parliament to reject any link between her death and the alleged drug-related execution. It wasn't until several weeks later that a big crocodile was reported to have been killed nearby, and following a necropsy, the stomach contents of the crocodile revealed a frightening finding. A woman's amputated arm. And because DNA testing was still unavailable at the time of the tragedy, identifying the remains definitively was impossible. However, given the arm's proximity to the site of Barrel Rock's disappearance and the gory nature of the finding, it was widely assumed that it belonged to her. Crocodile populations in northern Australia have increased significantly since the installation of protective measures in 1971. Prior to this, their numbers had plummeted due to overhunting, habitat destruction, and a high demand for their skin in the fashion business. Growing fears about the extinction of these ancient reptiles motivated the decision to conserve crocodiles as a species. Conservation initiatives included the creation of sanctuaries and breeding programs, as well as habitat restoration and rigorous anti-hunting and poaching restrictions. Furthermore, raising public awareness about the necessity of maintaining these apex predators has aided the success of these projects. It's worth noting that, as a result of these safeguards, crocodile populations in northern Australia have rebounded dramatically over the last several decades. Saltwater crocodile populations, in particular, have increased from a few thousand in the 1,970 to an estimated 100 to 200,000 now. While this is a success story for animal conservation, it has also increased human crocodile interactions and conflicts in regions with dense crocodile populations. Residents and visitors are warned to be cautious in order to avoid interactions with these lethal apex predators. Following safety precautions while near bodies of water, abstaining from feeding the animals, and avoiding activities in crocodile-infested areas are all part of this. Avoid regions where crocodile nests are present because crocodiles can become more hostile and territorial during the nesting season. Leave the area immediately if you observe any evidence of nesting, such as big mounds of vegetation. When fishing, dispose of fish scraps responsibly. Throwing fish scraps or bait into the water is not a good idea because it attracts crocodiles. Instead, dispose of them at a certified garbage disposal area away from bodies of water. Approaching the water's edge should be done with caution. Crocodiles are known to propel themselves onto the coast with their powerful tails, so remain a safe distance from the waterline when in crocodile-infested areas. Kneeling or crouching near the water is not recommended. As a result, you are more vulnerable. Keep your campsite away from the water. Set up your campsite at least 50 meters away from the water's edge when camping near water. This will reduce the likelihood of encounters with crocodiles at night. Group travel is recommended. Crocodiles are less prone to attack bigger groups of people. Therefore, consider traveling in groups when visiting crocodile-infested areas.